Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Banrisul's video conference to discuss the results of the fourth quarter of 2023. This video conference is being recorded and the replay can be accessed in our IR website right after this event ends. So today's event will be divided into two parts. So in the first session, we'll have the presentation of our results, number, financial performance by our CEO and president, Mr. Fernando Lemos. And after that, we have a Q&A session during which analysts and investors will be able to interact with the executives. Regarding logistics and general guidelines about the Q&A session, this broadcast has also a simultaneous translation into English. If this is your preference, just click the button at the bottom of your screen. And if you wish to ask a question via audio, please press the reaction button and then click raise your hand. If your question is answered, you can please leave the queue by clicking lower hand. This presentation will make today's available for download in the chat. And it's also available for download in our IR website. Now I'll give the floor to our president, Mr. Fernando Lemos, who will begin the presentation of our results. Please, Fernando, you may proceed. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you all here. I'd just like to mention before we start diving into the numbers that we have here all of those who are in charge of the financial area of the bank, the main executives. Just to let you know, I have I was the president of the bank from 2003 to 2010 when we had a major transformation of the institution along with the the, the publicly traded bank that Banrisul was turned into at the time. So this is why I'm here to discuss the results for 2023 with you. From the middle, uh, from half of the year, we started being uh, in the CEO of this bank. And then we started performing the, the job uh, for the two final quarter of 2023. And so let me dive into the numbers. So the total earnings, the total profit was 300 and I'm sorry, the net income was 871.1 million Brazilian reais with an increase in the year of 11.5%, which fit our uh, expectation, especially considering the performance in of the quar fourth quarter uh, of uh, 2023. In that uh, period, we had 304 millions as the net income, which configured the ROAE of our bank uh, as expected. Our net interest income helped impact the results of the bank with an expressive growth over 15% in the year and 7.8% percent in the final quarter, reaching uh, 1,476,600,000 um, Brazilian reais. In terms of the administrative expenses, there was no surprises, and fees and services revenues were um, within our expectations, with a growth in the past year of 9.7 percent, and in the past quarter, the growth was very expressive of 5.1 percent. Um, this is our highlights, and we all know uh, our company, uh, the Vero, has a very important impact on the earnings of the institution. Our loan portfolio also had an increase to 53.7 billion, 9.3% in the year, and 2.3% in the quarter. And the rural funding, the rural credit has had an uh, a highlight in the bank. So loans to individuals also had an impact. We need to be careful regarding default so we can adequate the portfolios as we wish, so they are under control. The total funding 
had a growth. Uh, it's a major strength of the bank. It reached 79.2 billion reais with an expressive growth of uh, in the last quarter that was very expressive, reaching 6.0%. Next, please. As you know, since uh, we started being the, in the CEO department of the bank, we directed the bank services to the client. Our focus is the client. So we have a digital attitude coupled with operating efficiency, innovation, and sustainability. Our goals have been directed to reach these goals. And then we have been working more in finding and reaching these results, not only in expanding our portfolios, but increasing and adding quality to the existing portfolios. On top of that, we are working with clients to have an excellent service, maintain our participation and share in the market. This is our main numbers. Profitability was 11.5% considering the previous year. ROAE 9.1 uh, in 2023, 9.1%. And in the final quarter, there was a growth of 12.3%. Uh, Changing net income was uh, a highlight, also including the net margin, reaching the goal of 823 million. This is our net interest income, as I showed to you. 15.3% was the growth, which was very expressive and very good for us. Our change in net interest income was very important. This is one of the reasons why we've had such good results. Uh, we expanded our credit and our loans, which allowed us to reach the numbers we are presenting right now. In terms of our loan portfolio, this is it. You can see this, the portfolio balance grew 9.3%, uh, considering that our individual's portfolio 77% of, of it is collat collateralized individual's portfolio, uh, having this collateral portfolio. And you know that the bank is very strong in payroll loans, uh, although we haven't grown in this previous month in, due to the a change in the state government, which uh, will later allows us to have a better uh, impact on these um, portfolios. Real estate loans had uh, a growth of 16%, and we are going to uh, work on improving the working capital in small and medium-sized companies in the state. And rural, rural loans, you know, the bank is very strong in that. It reached 11.3, uh, uh, sorry, 11 million 359 to December 23, 44.2%. And I, I forgot to mention that the real estate loans depend a lot on funding, but we plan to keep on working on that. 16% in growth. The asset quality is under control. Our default rate ratio was 2.6%. This is below the market. This is safe for us. The provision expenses and costs of risk also decreased us a little, which helps us. And the covered ratio is the same. This is very good, very safe for us. In terms of expenses and banking fees, resulting from wage agreements. In terms of funding, we have a very strong funding, very diversified funding. We will keep on doing that, and we expect the future to keep the same levels or similar levels. Our basal ratio is pretty comfortable, which allows the bank to keep on growing as projected with no surprises and no uh, 
hurdles in terms of capital. This is our guidance for 2024. The total loan portfolio, we expect to have a growth of 2 to 7%, cost of risk uh, from 2.5% to 3.5%, administrative expenses 6 to 10%, depending on the results and our financial margins, NII, we expect to reach 25% to 30%. And now, where I give the floor back to Nathan, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for the presentation, President. And now let's start our Q&A section. And we also already have some analysts here with questions. I'd like to start with Mr. Flavio Yoshida from Bank of America. Flavio, can you hear us well? Hello. Um, thank you for this opportunity. I would like to understand when you look at the guidance for portfolio growth, which are the lines? I mean, especially in individual segments, we should uh, hope for a, for some growth. I mean, we have a controlled a default and the coverage is high. So let me understand if you're going to change the mix, moving towards lines with higher profitability or if you plan to be or keep on being more conservative, working on the conservative side. What about the competition for this year? Because last year we know that there was a year of adjustments in the portfolio for most banks and their speech for the most part was about more competition. Uh, going for market share. So how are you getting ready to grow and with profitability considering this scenario? Well, this is Gonzaga speaking here regarding portfolio growth. For example, rural portfolio in 2023, the bank had 44% of the growth in this segment. This is a very po uh, diversified portfolio portfolio with a medium and small producers ticket. Most of our clients are these. And in the this cooperative uh, segment that gives this credit more for small producers. And real estate portfolio also grew. The rural portfolio is being uh, it's becoming more and more competitive, and our market share is very expressive in Rio Grande do Sul. In Rio Grande do Sul, we do not operate in, with rural portfolio or rural loans uh, outside Rio Grande do Sul. We have just uh, a very small number of clients in Paraná and other states, but mostly in Rio Grande do Sul. So if you grow too much in the market, we will hold down your growth for 2024. So you need to be careful about that. The real estate credit, uh, real estate loans grew 16%. So we do not expect to, for it to grow so much. There's not so much income to grow anymore for this year. So there will be a balance. So our focus will be to grow in terms of small and medium-sized enterprises. We are designing credit lines that are more adequate for the segment of the market. We are trying to understand the behavior of this small and medium-sized uh, clients along with Vero. And the uh, payroll loans portfolio, we want to grow in INSS segments. And the municipality uh, portfolio has uh, some space to grow, but the government side, the government portfolio, uh, there's not a lot of room for growth for this payroll loan in the government side because it has already grown so much. So basically, we're talking about the, the state and the legislative uh, assembly and public ministry and the justice court. Uh, these portfolios, they have already achieved uh, a proper level, not to create, not to generate debts with these the public servants. So there's not so much room to grow in these portfolios. And then this is why I told you that we are expecting to grow in medium, uh, small and medium sized enterprises in this uh, in this state, in Rio Grande do Sul, we will focus on this growth for small and medium-sized clients. 
just a follow up um, question. At the end of the day, on the end of the day, when you look at the guidance, it implies in a growth of margin be above the portfolio. There are some other effects, such as the selic re reduction that helps somewhat. But considering this effect, how do you see the margin growth of the product per se? And well, we talked about growth in the INSS segment. How are you seeing and facing the profitability of this product, taking into account that we have seen a reduction in the interest rate cap? So how are you managing to compensate for it or if the product profitability has uh, become uh, smaller? Well, as you said, we have a expectation of uh, two points silic. Our portfolios have a longer period in the asset, so we have a better margin, I believe. We are also exploring our treasury and going into the interbanking uh, market with a GLF, a well-calibrated one uh, along with the banks, optimizing more and more the revenues for this treasury in the interbanking markets. So there will be a select uh, rate reduction and the treasury, uh, which can ex help us explore this interbank uh, market. Small and medium-sized companies give us a reasonable margin and the INSS payroll loan is a heavy credit, is a heavy loan for the government. Uh, the, the rate has reached the ceiling at a cap, uh, in interest cap, but you perform a, a operation using our network and the clients and the market, they have a, they, the way they work, they give you a good margin, I would say. And what's more in terms of INSS segment, they have a very well uh, stabilized default rate. So it's very proper. Uh, it's, in this margin, uh, I believe we can obtain this. Thank you so much. Just to complement, uh, just to add something here, the stabilization of uh, payroll loans generates more margin. So you have an origination cost that is high, uh, and after it stabilizes, the result is more significant. Significant. Well, oh, that's perfect. Thank you, Flavio. Thank you very much. Very clear. Okay, thank you. Now, our second question, let's open the floor to Ricardo Buspiegel from BTG. Ricardo, can you hear us? Hello, Nathan. Hello, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to participate in the Q&A session. First of all, let me ask you about Sir Quality. Uh, we have seen uh, negotiated portfolio growth, and we have seen a change in the methodology to plan for the rural portfolio. So it's not so clear for us regarding the asset quality in the past uh, quarter. So in terms of asset quality, what changed from the third quarter of 2023 to now? What can we expect moving forward regarding the cost of risk of 2% uh, or 2.5% in this guidance? But if we consider the change of mix uh, results, what can we expect for 2024, considering deterioration, potential, and the uh, mix changes or changes in your product mix? Well, considering uh, rural role loan, the concept has to do with the, the working capital, the working capital, the credit to fund uh, the activity of planting in the cost of this operation. We are talking about very well selected clients, traditional clients that have operated and have worked with the banks for years. So we are focusing now on the segments to reattract these clients, and these clients uh, acquire rural loans with us. So they have a major equity. This is a really, really low risk operation. So we didn't want to hurt 
this uh, hurt this operation by working with such a high level. So this is why, because they are very well selected clients. So on the other hand, I would say that I'm pretty conservative in terms of provision. Uh, but for this portfolio, we had to forget a little about the provision because these clients were out of the were were outside of this curve, this risk curve. Regarding the future, all banks have had have been hurting in terms of their portfolio, but in terms of retail and other high liquidity activities, uh, working with Vero, we can increase our services. Uh, in terms of uh, credit, and we need to work uh, work a lot on the collection. We made a lot of effort putting together uh, managers and employees to keep this uh, default ratio low by working on collection uh, co procedures and also the. And is, it also has an impact on the on the employee profit sharing by the end of the year. So this is why we made this effort to keep the uh, the default ratio as low as possible. So working really hard on this, administrating this this portfolio very well, then I believe we can maintain this um, the space. Oh, very well, uh, great. Uh, we have seen the guidance showing some lines, some figures. I'd like to understand a little bit more. What about the expectation regarding services and operating expenses? How do you see the perspective in the growth of these lines for this year? And if the Banhi Corporate uh, payment uh, arrangement, what do you expect? for this positive impacts, negative impacts for the this year? Well, first of all, in our service uh, revenues, we are working very hard to work and uh, work more on the, in the currency uh, services. The spread is low, it's very good, we haven't, working with limiting factors to uh, giving a waivers to some uh, clients in our financial system we could, can gain uh, a lot with limits so we are exploring the services the exchange service and fees will increase as we work every year Year by year, we have worked with uh, price levels, and we have like a vegetative growth uh, space. And we have worked uh, on the portfolios of, of of the companies, of the branches, uh, INSS customers. We have a very uh, good uh, service on this. We have a system that will add values to credit to overdraft services as well. So this is the expectation we have regarding the growth of service fees. And also we plan to add VAN to Vero portfolio and also working with the interoperability of Banhi Compras. Let me tell you that there will, must be some effect. On the other hand, there will be like a a, a pool in, in Rio Grande do Sul because we have over a hundred thousand companies that work with uh, we can work with this uh, Vero and PCR. We are going to pay to provide services, so the competition and other players. So we have a pool of over uh, 100,000 uh, companies, small companies. So they can take their services to other comp competitor for acquiring services, but we will get there to try to work. 
so they can w start working not only with Banrisul but also with Vero. That is a small um, threat. We may lose 5,000 to 10,000 uh, clients who only have Banri Compras, then they choose to go to another bank. This is part of the game, but the opportunities are much bigger. And if you work well, we can make a lot of money, more money. The state of Rio do Sul uh, added electronic invoice in the POS. It was a threat, but now we have all of our customers with NFC and in fiscal uh, invoice, digital fiscal invoice, and which added, uh, which made the services much quicker. There was a technology, a state-of-the-art technology on the equipment, and the clients do not lose any time working with these um, uh, digital invoices. So it helped us secure more clients. We have uh, uh, some assets and some liabilities working in this customers. You have always uh, have to look for that. Just a final question uh, regarding service uh, revenue. It has space for expansion, expansion, right? Regarding margin uh, growth expectation uh, and mar margin growth adjusted to risk. So we reach 13% uh, adjusted with the ROAE. Does this make sense regarding profitability as a whole? I do not know about this number, this figure yet, but, but yeah, I need to, to consider the margin. We haven't said that before, but we have credit re recovery curve regarding problematic credits below the market. We also have uh, some room for improvement in this area. So we will devote efforts to update modeling and digital channels and massify the services and probably we'll have some good opportunities in this area as well. Yeah, that is, this asset will be recovered. A good part of this, this pool will be recovered. Thank you very much for your answers. Thank you, Ricardo. Now moving on here, we have Yuri Fernandez from JP Morgan. Hi, Yuri. Hi, Nathan. Uh, congratulations on your results. The guidance imply very good growth in terms of net income growth. You are very well positioned for this margin um, tension. Regarding this agreement with the state for the payroll, uh, we still have two years to go. I think the agreement goes to 2026, right? But maybe we have a new administration in the bank. So how are you dealing with this agreement, the agreement with the state government? Can you talk about that? Hello, Yuri. Can you listen to me? Yes, yes, I can. Thank you. Well, we have a very good uh, relationship with the state government. We haven't discussed the agreement because we still have two years to go, but there's no problems regarding that. If you want need to negotiate in the future, there's, there'll be no problem. I don't believe there are any setbacks, any problems. Very good relationship with the treasury. And there was, New, a new rule uh, passed uh, recently that is very positive uh, for us to prevent the super in uh, debt of uh, public institutions and the government set very good deadlines and fees and one of the things we saw in the market one of the the, the mistakes of the payroll loans is that uh, leveraging uh, that is too high. Ideally, it's 60 months, 60, 70 months to avoid uh, that high debt and have some uh, have some good results. So taking all of this into consideration, I would say our relationship is very positive with the state government and maybe we think about uh, well, we have to uh, review this uh, situation two years from now because everything may change. Who would say that PICS 
would become such a huge form of payment two years ago. So we have to consider the situation two years from now. Well, I have another question, thank you, regarding your payroll loans portfolio. Well, we have a grow, some growth in the rural, and, but considering this spread compression, what about the origination? I would like to know your ideas about this caps. These caps have pressured the payroll loans uh, results. The bank had some space to to perform reprecification. But how do you see the payroll loan portfolio uh, in the future? Well, we have some a very good space to prospect credit. 95% of this portfolio, uh, the payroll portfo loan portfolio is uh, in the INSS segment. We had some we had some problems with the profitability in with the portfolio in the 2022 and which also had some reflections in the beginning of 2023 so the perspective of this portfolio for 2024 is very positive i would say uh, we've been working in payroll loans we need to understand payroll loans and how to operate them and how to attack this segment i mean how to deal with the segment we have a very good strategy we are not going to grow the volume. We are refinancing the portfolio and finding um, new loans in the INSS cap. So volume will be similar, but profitability is expected to be very good. Uh, have you seen any pressure from digital competitors such as Nubank? Nubank is going into an INSS. Do you feel any threats or? I don't know about the new bank uh, size in this operation, but well, in this market, we have a certain uh, loyalty, uh, customer loyalty. It's around 700, 600,000 clients, captive clients, let's I would say. And so the consumer, uh, they tend not to change banks. So they have their partner, the corresponding partner, And then there is this relation that tends to be stable. Well, the operations are open sea opera kind of operations, but uh, anyway, I don't see a big threat by Nubank uh, in terms of competition. Well, this will be another player in the market. I don't know if they keep on with that uh, fee, with that rate. Uh, I don't know if they can maintain that in the market. So. Um, I would say it's a, just another uh, player, another competitor in the market. Thank you, thank you very much and congratulations. In terms of interests and payout for 2024, so we do not have a, an approved payout to inform the bank in 2020. To 2023, bank worked with 50% of distribution, and this is sent to the assembly that takes place by the end of April. But there is a trend for us to have a payout adjustment, maybe go back to 40%, the historical 40% of the bank. I don't know if you have anything else to add. Well, in due time, we will uh, talk about this issue this year in 2023 i mean there will be some dividends we will pay because we haven't paid interest on capital for the last quarter of the previous year so there will be some dividends to be paid that is due to the market to the investors and then we will study this matter to consider how we're going to distribute interest on capital for 2024 in due time we will divulge these uh, this results. That's great. Thank you. Another question we have here is regarding the agribusiness portfolio growth. Uh, we have talked about that in the previous answers, but there is a specific point here. He says that 
as most of the growth came from the agribusiness, how do you see the evolution of DFO due to uh, possible uh, problems with crop, with the crops in in here? In Rio do Sul, the situation is a little different here. Yes, Nathan, let me tell you that in spite maybe in the center and west region of Brazil, there will be some losses in the soy crop. But here in Rio Grande do Sul, we had some terrible droughts in the past three years. But this year, if everything is as well as it has been until now, the crops will not be affected. So we will not have problems regarding the the rural or the agro portfolio. I believe this portfolio will remain stable or even grow a little. Thank you, President, for the compliment. We have uh, two other questions here, and I believe then we move on to final remarks. The first of them uh, regards expanding. Is Banrisul considering expanding its areas of activity to other states uh, in the southern region at some point. Well, our bank is focused on the state of Grande Sul. However, with the new technologies in apps and so on, we can explore other uh, and go into other states, but our main focus will remain the state of Grande Sul. Well, moving on to our final question, I would like to ask you, is there any plans to implement private bank segment to, to work with the loyalty, client loyalty in the high income segment especially? Well, we have a an important portfolio of the bank, which is And we have Itaú and Santander, Itaú with uh, Personalité, Santander with uh, their own for for high uh, income uh, clients. We also have one for this uh, one segment for this high uh, income uh, clients, and these high income um, clients they have a customized service provided to them especially in big cities and also in small cities with managers and leaders of the bank branches, both for funding as in any other banks. We work hard to retain these clients, these high uh, income clients, because this is a very good type of client, especially in the individual's uh, segment. So yes, we'll have a special treatment for these clients and so keep on having that. Thank you very much. So I would like to thank everybody for being here. It's a Friday, pre-Carnival Friday in the afternoon. And I will give you give the floor back to Fernando for his final remarks. Thank you, Nathan. I would like to thank everyone for being here, the investors and press that covers the market. Uh, it's, uh, it was a satisfaction to present the results to you this afternoon. And our goals are focus to achieve better and better results for this bank. We hope to have better, even better results this year. Thank you very much. I wish you have a wonderful carnival. Well, um, yeah, we had to make this, uh, this meeting in this pre-carnival Friday, but thank you very much for your participation and take care. Have a good day.